بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته since September 2019 the Islam Education Trust Human Welfare Department has positively touched over 6,500 lives through its intervention program the food aid program the financial aid program Kurbani meat distribution during Eid Al-Adha widow's empowerment program the orphan care program and the tree planting program for this good work to continue and be sustained we need your continuous support Jazakumullahu khairan as we look forward to your generous donation Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Bismillah as salatu wa salam ala sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Viewers yeah, again welcome to our program Parenting in Islam In the last episode we were discussing on the girl child education and we started talking about the ideal muslim wife uh, naturally we know that every girl child is a potential wife and a, uh, a potential mother and therefore how does her acquiring of education makes her an ideal muslim wife we are going to uh, continue on that particular issue and as usual I have with me Haji Amariam Suleiman You are welcome to the program Assalamu Alaikum Wa Alaikum Assalam Wa Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Wa Barakatuh um, Like I said yesterday, I mean the last episode we were discussing on the ideal Muslim wife as we know that every girl child is a potential mother and I mean a, a potential wife and a mother so how will acquiring of her education contribute to making her an ideal Muslim wife? MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah I think the question is in line with the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he said the best of your wives are those when you look at them you are pleased with them when you beat them, they obey you. And uh, when you, you are absent, they guard their honor and your integrity. Mm. And uh, the explanation to this is just that it is only educated women that fits into this classification of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mm. Let's take for example, he said when you look at them, you are pleased with them. A man can only be pleased with a wife that is well kept, who sees it as mandatory for her to take good care of herself in order to please her husband. Mm. She takes her bath every morning, probably twice in a day. She plaits her hair weekly. She washes her clothes. She cleans her environment mm. to please the husband. In line with that, I never had this of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, if any man goes out, and get attracted to any woman, he should run back home to meet his wife. Yeah. If, by chance, he runs back home, and he made the contrary, he will not be happy. Yeah. So what the Sunnah is saying in essence is that she should always be attractive to her husband through taking care of her body. Yeah. And he said again, when you beat her, when you uh, command her to do anything, she obeys you. Yeah. Yes. She obeys you. Yeah. Any woman that does not obey the rules and regulations of her husband in her matrimonial home is not an ideal woman. But there are restrictions and limitations. There are areas where a woman cannot obey her husband even if he commands her. Because the, the scholar of the Ahlali said, yeah. There is no obedience in the command of human being in contrary to obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. There are three categories, three areas I would like to mention here. Yeah. The first one is when a man requested to have a sexual intercourse with his wife when she is menstruating. Under this condition, 
it has become illegal sexual intercourse. Illegal in the sense that she's menstruating. There is a verse in the Quran that said, Yes, I'm going to call Mahidi, or who is that? For at this time, Mr. Afil Mahidi. If they ask you concerning menstruation, tell them it is a harmful blood, and distance yourself from a woman whenever they are menstruating. Mm -hmm. Don't go near to them. Mm -hmm. So in this condition, you don't you don't expect a woman to obey you, and if she doesn't obey you here. She's in essence obeying the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even when she's disobeying you. But we advise that it should be the hikmah will not be that hasana. If it's ignorance of it, enlighten him, it is haram, because this is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and this is a verse supporting it. Aisha radiallahu anha said that whenever she's menstruating, the Prophet is to command her to use a sheet to cover from her navel to her nails. Yeah. And they lie on the same bed together with the prophets. So, they yeah. does all other things aside touching of the private parts because she is not pure. So that is what should be done by every man. Yeah. And this is what will reduce the intensity of the sexual desire of the man. Again, there is another, the third one, the second one is minor sodomy. It is haram for any man to want to approach his wife through anally. Because the hadith of Rasulullah Sallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not look at any man who has sexual intercourse with a man anally or with a woman anally. That is through the anus. And another hadith of Rasulullah Sallam is explicit that you can have sexual intercourse with woman from the rear in as far as it is from it is from the vagina it is allowed yeah. because the hadith also said that the verse of the quran says uh mm -hmm. your wives are a tillage to you you go to them anytime you will mm -hmm. that tillage means the right portion for a woman for a man to go into and that is a vagina mm -hmm. So on no account should a man want his wife to allow him have sexual intercourse with her through her vagina, uh, through her anus. And the woman should not also obey him. Her disobedience to him is an obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the second instance. In the third instance is when a man wishes to have a sexual intercourse with a woman in the month of Ramadan. In the daytime in the month of Ramadan, mm. from after the Sahur to before the sunset, mm. it is haram. You are, are you are having intercourse uh, intentionally then is a problem and tantamount to the breaking of the fast. Mm. So no man should attempt to have sexual intercourse with a woman in the month of Ramadan. If he does, there is a penalty. The penalty is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Somebody came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm rude. He said, what happened to you? What is the battle with him? He said, I met with my wife in this month of Ramadan by the data. The Prophet said, can you, when I met a slave, can you free a slave? He said, no. Can you feed 60 ladies? He said no. Then he equally said to him, Can you fast 60 days consecutively? He said no. The prophet kept quiet. In the midst of that, somebody bought sadaka of a basket full of dates. And where the Sudlai asked, Where is that man who asked a question? He said, I'm here. He said, Come here. He came. He said, Take these dates and go and give it to the needy. He said, Ya Rasulullah, am I giving it to any needy that is more poorer than me? Ya Rasulullah said, yes. He said, Ya Rasulullah, to God, there is no needy in Medina that is more poorer than myself. Hmm. Ya Rasulullah smiled to the extent that the pre of his teeth were sin. He said, okay, take it 
and go and consume it with your family. Yeah. This is talking about the intensity of the grievances, of the punishments for any man who attempted meeting with his wife or who met with his wife in the month of Ramadan. Yeah. Under this, I want to caution parents, talk to our parents who fix marriages amongst the month of Ramadan. I don't know if there is a hadith or a verse of Quran that make it mandatory that fasting, that marriage should be done amongst to the fasting. When couples will need to have their honeymoon, you cannot join two husband couples, male and female, and ask them to meet with each other after being married. It is positive and negative. So if they must do, please parents, there should be a caution, there should be an orientation that if you do that, if you attempt meeting with your wife in the daytime in the month of Ramadan, this is the penalty that is going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. I, may, I want to add that after the prophet has given the basket of day to that man, he said, you should go and repay the fasting of one day. That is that very day that he has sexual intercourse with his wife, mm -hmm. he should repay the fasting. Because this Saraka has expiated yes. the... The punishment, yes, the punishment, but that fasting of one day, you should go and repeat it. Okay. What we are here saying, in essence, is that these are the three critical areas that even if a man wanted the wife to obey him, she will not obey him. Okay. And if she disobey him, she's obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, thank you very much, Madam Amadou. Sure. I will have to cut you here so that we go on break. When we come back, we'll continue on this particular topic. We'll be right back.